Jeffrey is a normal guy. He spends most of his time on the internet playing video games, jacking off and watching self-improvement videos. He doesn't understand why he can't take action, why he can only seem to do things that give instant pleasure. Adonis. Adonis delays gratification. He doesn't indulge in the bad habits of normal people and because of that, he's able to achieve his wildest goals like growing a business or building his dream body. Leg games, boys. Holy sh! <laughs> oh my god! Legs really, really grew on this bulk. God damn! Last year, everyone on YouTube was making videos on how to reset your mind in 24 hours. I took it one step further than that. When I tell you the benefits that I've experienced on this one year dopamine detox, I think you'll want to join me. First of all, my name is Hamza and I help young men go through the Jeffrey to Adonis transformation through self-improvement. You're clearly interested in that. So if you scroll down right now, click on the subscribe button, then it's a win-win for both of us. I'm going to tell you about my story. In May 2020, I first learned about dopamine detoxing from all of the viral videos that were going on. And I had the brilliant idea to do two weeks of going all out on the bad habits before I first would try the dopamine detox. So two weeks, 100% bad habits. I had a binge eating disorder, so you can see that that, that mentality came into all other parts of my life. And by the way, this video is going to be pretty unfiltered too might not want to watch it next to your parents. For two weeks, I would wake up and immediately start smoking the crack pipe. I'd eat some dirty ass food, jack off probably like three to four to five times and spend the entire day on the internet. So I'd wake up first, go onto Reddit whilst I was having my morning poop, stop smoking weed, go onto my computer, play some video games, watch boring ass Netflix shows and movies, just binge eating constantly, literally just eating snacks through everything I was doing, no structure to my diet. Maybe I exercised three times in the two weeks. Eventually I started drinking alcohol in the apartment and I'll be honest to you, I got really dirty. I started a couple of days taking MDMA, just sat there, literally just sat there in the apartment. I turned into a crackhead. So you can probably see that I was the perfect candidate for a dopamine detox. And finally, by evening slash nighttime, I would wind down by just going on my computer, going onto 4chan, looking at some messed up posts, jacking off more. Sometimes I'd stay up to like 3, 4 a.m. just smoking weed up until I'd pass out. And probably the worst time of my life, to be honest. And it was, it was odd to do all this whilst I tried not to think about that part of my life these days because it just makes me like I'm grateful for it you know I'm grateful for the progress that I've made but when I do think about it it makes me a bit fearful to think that I could sink back into that type of lifestyle so I hated my life I used to cry a lot maybe I'd say every day or every two days I'd, I'd be crying I'd burst into tears I was living with my girlfriend at the time and so she'd be like comforting me but you boys know how that goes when if you break down emotionally like that like it, it, it's done for you and although I somewhat broke up with her eventually when I went on to the dopamine detox, like there was no attraction left from her anyway. I used to journal a lot. At this point, I had relatively found self-improvement and I was trying to do the stuff. I just wasn't able to do it consistently. So I had already been working out for years before this in terms of going to the gym, building the body, goddamn. But in terms of like meditation, journaling, that's all of the good habits, the reading and stopping internet, stopping fapping, it was it was a bit of a struggle for me, especially quitting smoking as well. I wanted to quit smoking a year before this and every single day I'd, I'd go back to go back to the old weed and it was a true addiction. Now when, it's kind of a side note, but when people say that, oh, you know, weed's not a problem, weed's actually good for you, you can't get addicted to weed. Bro, I wanna, I wanna fucking, what's that downwards elbow that I've been learning in kickboxing. I want to hit him with one of these, bro. Weed's not, not bad for you. Shut up, bro. You're clearly not smoking like I was. So all around, before I got into the dopamine detox, I had this horrible stuck feeling in life that I wanted to change. I knew what actions would help me. I just wasn't doing them because they were just too hard, because they weren't giving me instant gratification. And 
Instant gratification, delayed gratification, those are two very, very important phrases that are gonna change your life. And I'll, I'll teach you all about them in the later parts of this video. So what did I do? I learned about dopamine detoxing. I knew that this was the thing that was gonna change it all for me and I made a very drastic decision to move out of the city apartment that I was living in to move back home to my, my family's house. I live in my family, so I can't smoke weed, I can't do any like drugs or anything here. I'm just gonna do, you know, I could still, be spending time, like my computer's right here, I've got my own room obviously, and so I could still be spending time doing the bad habits. But this was like the new chapter of my life. In the book Deep Work by Cal Newport, he, he gives this phrase of the grand gesture. When you really wanna take something serious, you do a grand gesture. And this was mine. This was my grand gesture. I said, I'm tired of this life. I'm tired of smoking weed. I'm literally gonna move back to my mommy because I know that she's not gonna let me smoke weed anymore. <laughs> So I get back here and I instantly get onto the dopamine detox. Now, before I tell you about the rules that I have personally set myself, which have helped me get to this point where I'm a year in, I'm not doing some 24 hour challenge or a week challenge to you know do the YouTube video. This was for a life change. Like I am never going back to normal life. If you adopt the same rules that I'm about to tell you, you will become different for life. You will never want to go back to being like a normal person. It, it sickens me to think of life like that again. But before I tell you the rules, the why is more important. The why is always far, far more important than the what or the how, and you must understand the why. Why did I want to do this? Why should you consider a dopamine detox? My why was because I wanted to like myself again. In this modern world, literally no one has self-love anymore, and I certainly didn't have it. I didn't like myself. I thought I was a piece of shit. And I actually, I spent some time to, to think, okay, what exactly is self-love? Now, of course, I, you know, I did the YouTube search and there was a lot of these like, maybe sexist, but you know, like feminine videos of just the girls saying like, I'll oh, do some online shopping, huh? go have a bath with a bath bomb. Like, is that gonna help me, bitch? So I spent a, a large amount of time journaling and really thinking, okay, what is self-love? How, what is a practical, somewhat masculine way that I can generate self-love? No, no bullshit no wishy-washy stuff. What is practical? What are the steps to form self-love? Like I could be selling this right now. I could get this viral and this, this would make me famous. There is practical steps to self-love and it is to do things for your future self. That's the only thing you have control over. Do good things for your future self. The reason why no one likes themselves anymore, the reason why you don't have pure self-love for yourself is because the younger version of yourself set you up to fail. The younger version of yourself ate that junk food and now you have too high of a body fat percentage than you're comfortable with. The younger version of yourself didn't study hard enough and now you've got a shitty degree or, or a shitty grades or a shitty career. So you don't have much self-love. Now flip it around. I have my dream body right now, right? Six, almost seven years of training. Obviously my training and diet went to shit during these bad parts, but especially the last year of this detox. Best training I've ever had. I have huge self-love for myself because the younger version of myself delayed gratification and put me as the priority. And so I am sat here today chilling with my dream body. That's self-love. Self-love is doing things for your future self. And that's what the dopamine detox aims to accomplish. That was my why. And I suggest if you are considering your own dopamine detox, you, you set a declaration of why you're doing this. Not just what you aim to achieve, not just the goals that you wanna do, but the why. What is the purpose? And I think self-love is a fantastic purpose to do this for. So here is the strategy of my dopamine detox. Now, like I said, I wanted this to be a long-term improvement, hopefully a lifelong improvement. I did not want to do any kind of clickbait challenge. I didn't want to do a 24 hours to reset your mind, a one week dopamine. It's not for a challenge. This isn't for you. Like what I'm saying this for me, this isn't for you. I'm doing this for myself. I'm not doing this for the viewers on YouTube. I'm not doing this for a 24 hours to click, you know, like clickbait videos, which get a million views. And it's the before and after picture in the thumbnail where it's a guy on his phone and it's like a guy reading like, <laughs> I'm not doing that shit. It, it's not for your entertainment, it's for my benefit. And so that means that the way that I do my dopamine detox, the way that it's been successful in completely changing my life, it isn't as sexy as doing a 24 hour challenge, which you can't do anything and you can only sit there and be bored. I knew that if I was gonna do this for life, the rules had to be pretty lenient. And so in general, the rules come from drastically reducing instant gratification and drastically increasing delayed gratification. Instant gratification, the bad thing, are the activities that give us instant pleasure, but they're usually not good for us. That's video games, because video games are kind of fun when we play them right now, but they just make you into like a retard over time. Porn, junk food drugs, 
All of these give you instant pleasures, quite a high level of instant pleasures. But pretty much every single time you do any of these, every single time you indulge in one of these, your life gets slightly worse. Not a huge amount. You can take some drugs every now and then. You can watch porn. Probably not. But like the issue is that we've built up a habit of doing these every single day. And so your life trajectory is like this. That's what instant gratification does to you. That's why you don't love your, your younger self. That's why you look back and you think, I've had a shit life. This is why we don't have self-love is because we keep doing this to our lives. How could you love yourself when you're here looking back at yourself when you were up here? Delayed gratification is the other way around. Delayed gratification are the activities that are hard and uncomfortable and challenging right now, but they give us a long-term benefit. That's exercise, because exercise, unless you know you're very experienced and you've gotten into it, generally for most people, exercise is actually uncomfortable. It's actually pretty difficult. They don't want to go and work out. But in the long term, it gives you better fitness, better health, better confidence, better self-esteem, better body, more attraction from girls, more respect from men. It's awesome. Built in a business, learning some skills, meditating, journaling, reading. All of these are somewhat uncomfortable, somewhat boring right now. I know what you're probably thinking, but, but uh, reading's not boring, how's it show up? For most people it is, and it's certainly not as fun as overstimulating your brain on any kind of video game. When you delay gratification, you secure your future self to have a better life. That's the point of the dopamine detox, or at least my, my point, my long-term detox. So now let's go through the tactics, what exactly I did that you can do too. I made a timetable. Now, usually when I say this, people get a little bit bored because they wanted, you know, they wanted me to say something exciting. Do you remember the timetables that we used to have in school? 9 a.m. was science, 10 a.m. was maths, 11 a.m. was English. You could probably still remember what time X lesson was, right? Because it gets ingrained in our brain. There's a reason why every job, every school uses timetables because it works. We leave the education system and then we just think, oh, I don't need to do anything with time management. And then you're like, hmm, gee, I wonder why I'm not being productive. I wonder why I'm not doing anything with my time. It's because you haven't managed <laughs> your time. So the timetable, out of every productivity tactic I've ever learned about, and I've learned about a fair amount, out of every time management, the timetable's better than all of them put together. Every single thing I've ever learned about productivity is undermined by the timetable. Because the timetable, this is the, the OP, the overpowered part of the timetable, it makes your entire day into a habit. If your jaw hasn't dropped, you don't even understand what I just said. The timetable makes your entire day into a habit. Remember, we're trying to build a habit or two. We're trying to build the habit of meditation. Imagine having your high productivity, your high performance day as a habit. The whole day becomes a habit. It's like I can do my high performance day like AFK now. Like I can just do it chilling because it's a habit. I know what time to wake up. I know what task is next already. I can't explain how overpowered this is. I've had pictures of my time table come up on screen. The guys who follow it change their lives. The guys who think, oh, this doesn't look so... Hamza, what about the Pomodoro technique? Hamza, shut up. Remake it exactly how I have. Don't have the limiting beliefs. But, but, but Hamza, sometimes my day... Oh yeah, of course it does. Sometimes your day does change. Sometimes life gets in the way. Yes, we know. But this is your ideal day. We're not saying, okay, this, this has to be every single day. The whole point is this is like the 100% best day that you could have. You write it down. Literally, I haven't even purposely done this, but I'm, I'm going to look like a dickhead if this isn't. But I'm pretty sure if I open this right now, my timetable is going to open. And it did. <laughs> I didn't even plan for this to happen, but you can't see that shit. Yeah, yeah, there. I keep it open on my phone all the time. Like if there's one app that's open on my phone, it's this. I've read this timetable probably about two, 3,000 times, but I still read it a couple times every single day just because if there's a moment that I have some time to like look at my phone, I would rather look at this, which has truly changed my life than go on to any of the bad stuff. The reason why I'm going on about this instead of the specific actions like quitting social media, quitting video games, that stuff's sexy. That stuff is so cool and you wanna hear me and you wanna, you know, you wanna see the B-roll of me like deleting the apps on my phone. It's BS. Anyone who showed you a video of that saying, oh, I deleted, I deleted social media, I deleted, it's BS. That's not how it works. Your alcoholic parents, your alco you've got an alcoholic mother or, or uncle. He's done that before, hasn't he? He's thrown away the alcohol. What happened? Did he just suddenly quit because he threw away that one bottle? No, he bought more. You've got a fat family member or a fat co-worker and they've said the same thing, haven't they? Oh, I threw away the junk food. What happened? They're still fat. Why? Because they went and bought more junk food. How many times have you uninstalled League of Legends? Too many. And yet it's still, you're literally loading up a game of League as, as I'm speaking right now because deleting and hiding the, the stuff that you're addicted to doesn't work. When you structure your day with things that you would rather do, you make progress. 
when you try to to get validation from people by saying i i deleted social media i i, I uninstalled league of legends you make no progress still to this day i say i've said this sentence a hundred times and still to this day people talk to me they're like i deleted social media a week later that not even a week two days later they're back onto it i deleted league of legends i'm, I'm gonna uninstall league of legends right now but i see you playing it every single day deleting this stuff in like a big righteous moment does not work and i know that that's what you want and i know that that's the videos that you've watched before it does not work like that you don't cure your addiction by just throwing it away because you are addicted and you still get it you need to become addicted to something else i'm addicted to the timetable for more than the year just recently i have and i explain why but for almost the entire year i left my addictions on my computer i left the video games right there i left social media on my phone this is a side note but dopamine detox and, and doing the right things delaying gratification not indulging in you know, instant gratification it comes from willpower willpower is the skill of disobeying your lizard brain and your lizard brain is, is the dumbass part of your brain that convinces you to play video games that convinces you to skip the workout so the lizard brain you could probably say is your biggest enemy ever because it's around 24 7 it's that internal bully in your mind that tells you to do the bad things and then straight afterwards it leaves you and you're like why, why did I just cheat on my diet again? I, what, I'm on a nofap streak. Why did I just jack off? It seemed like such a good idea a second ago. What no one online is telling you, because I don't believe that they've actually experienced a huge self-improvement journey from going to the depths of instant gratification addiction to like becoming a normal person or better than normal. If I'm better, I am better than normal, let's be honest. But no one's actually telling you is how to level up your willpower. And that's what automatically gets leveled up through dopamine detoxing, but only if you do it the right way. And most people are doing it the wrong way. They want to increase their willpower through dopamine detox, but they do it through a stupid way of essentially covering up their eyes and saying, but I can't see the junk food anymore. I, I've deleted social media. I, I don't have the apps on my phone, so I'm cured. I, I've, I've installed a YouTube website blocker, so I can't see YouTube anymore. I'm cured. You never give your willpower a chance to level up. The reason why you struggle with these, the reason why you can't do the hard actions is because you have low levels of willpower. And the few attempts that you've made to try and level up your willpower has been undermined by the YouTube channels that show you, oh, I deleted the apps. Don't delete the apps. Keep them on your phone. Don't install the website blocker. Don't throw away the junk food. Don't do anything with the, the addictions. Keep them in front of you. For over a year, I kept chocolate bars on my desk and I used to just stare at them, just looking at them and, and feeling how I would feel the cravings. How many people do you know who have done that? Now chocolate doesn't have an effect on me. We have it in the house all the time, but it doesn't have an effect on me. If your way of trying to improve yourself is to simply set up the environment and, and close your eyes, Eventually, your eyes are going to be open when someone offers you the chocolate. Eventually, you're, you're going to feel like playing League and you're going to be like, oh, let me let me just download it again because you've never actually built the willpower to have League of Legends installed, just to have the icon right in front of you and literally just choose not to click on it. That's like my secret to staying like this for an entire year. And it, it annoys me because no one else is actually telling you the truth. Everyone's giving you the clickbait like, oh, I deleted social media. Here's his B-roll of me uninstalling the app on social media. Like... And then they downloaded it again. You, you can literally search on their, their profile, whatever YouTuber you want to see. You can literally search them on Instagram after they've said that they deleted the apps and they're back on posting. They're back on commenting to everyone. <sighs> so the tactics with my dopamine detox was firstly to set this ideal timetable. The ideal day just wrote out just like that. And that was my guide for the day. That was me trying to just follow it as best as I can. In this timetable, at first, I allowed myself some bad time, some instant gratification time. And so I did the 80-20 rule and I said, okay, what are the 20% of bad habits, the instant gratification habits that give me the most joy? Because you need to keep something in. Remember, we're not doing a 24 hour challenge that you can, you know, you can for 24 hours, just sit in a room and do nothing, but for, you know, we're doing this for life. And so for life, we've got to think about adherence, long-term, the ability to stick to the plan rather than just making it extreme because we've got our entire lives to make it more extreme. So for the first while, I gave myself like a solid couple of hours to like two hours per day to just spend on instant gratification. So I did the 80-20 Pareto's principle and I'll just, I'm not gonna lie, so I'll tell you the, the two favorite things I wanted to do was meet girls from Tinder and watching some YouTube videos. So I completely stopped social media. I completely stopped drugs. I completely stopped binge eating, especially junk food. I, I literally don't even eat junk food at all. I stopped watching movies and Netflix and, and any type of games or any anything else. I literally just watched about an hour of YouTube a day and probably like once or twice a week I'd meet any like girls that I was matching with on Tinder. That wasn't my fun. 
And that was more than enough, honestly. And so for the rest of my time, I was following the timetable as best as I could. Of course, life would get in the way. Of course, sometimes I'd have extra responsibilities or you know, I'd sleep a bit longer someday or something. But generally, I'd be looking at the timetable and just trying to follow that as best as possible. That was my plan. Now, I know this video is about dopamine detoxing and you wanted me to talk about like overthrowing the internet and stuff, but all of this came from the timetable because you will fail your dopamine detox. You will not transform your life on, until you have a new structure to your day. Because what is the dopamine detox other than just doing different things in your day? It's the timetable that you need to get onto. So that's the tactic. And finally, what are the benefits then? After one year of this lifestyle, what are the benefits? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what the, the difference of my life is right now compared to one year ago, and you can tell yourself. I'm in the best shape I've ever been in. Here is a one year transformation picture. I've had visible abs for the last entire year. I've never done that before. I've, I would only, for, for the years that I've trained before this, I would only have visible abs for honestly a month max because I was always a binge eater. I've always, like I've had anxiety. And so with, if you've got anxiety, you just binge eat usually. And so anytime I would get lean from doing lots of exercise and dieting, I'd see my abs, ab veins and everything. Literally within a month, I'd just, each. I used to go to the shops and literally do an entire food shop of just snacks and just eat all this like whilst I was just sat at home watching Netflix. And so for the last year I've had visible abs. I've been the best shape of my life. I've been training with the gymnastic rings, which is like a completely new skill for me because I usually just lift weights, but I've been training with them and I've been making some pretty damn good progress. Sometimes it, it hits me like for an entire year, two, three, four times a week, I've been going out and training with these gymnastic rings and, and the training is actually difficult. And I've just been going out consistently doing it and I can do some pretty cool movements. I can do a handstand press on the rings, like five reps on the rings. I can do not exactly a front lever, but I'm, I'm seeing some pretty good progress. I can hit the back lever and in, including with fitness, my cardio's went straight up. So before the dopamine detox, I used to do pretty much no cardio, a little bit of boxing here and there, but nothing much. Since then, I can now run what feels like an unlimited amount. Like I don't really have to stop running unless I want to. And so 5K is like normal. I ran a 10K one time. I've now started kickboxing. In terms of fitness, honestly, I've never been better before. I've never been in better shape. I've never felt physically as strong or as agile or, or as, as much stamina as I have now. In terms of money and finances, I'm making the most money I've ever made before with YouTube. So in, with YouTube videos, I've been uploading at least twice a week, every single week for the, for the last year. And I've made this my business. I've made my purpose in life helping young guys to get out of that dopamine rut and to achieve the same transformation that I have. I've helped a fair amount of guys. I've created a community of young men who are all climbing, who are all on self-improvement. We do use Discord as well. If you do want to join us, there's a Discord link in the description with like 500 guys who talk about fitness and no fap and red pill and all that. So if you're interested in this, just scroll down right now, click on the Discord link and you'll be able to join. My business is, it's it's not making it like an a amazing amount, but like I'll tell you the actual figures. I'm not afraid of telling you. So January, I made 1,550 pounds. February, I made 1,742 pounds. March, I made 1,463. April went down to like 800 and something because I, I stopped doing a part of the, not April, sorry, May. May went down to like 800 pounds. So it fluctuates, but in general, it is the most I've made before, even though I've worked like a full-time job, like a low-end full-time job before. And it's literally my dream to be a YouTuber. So I've, in one year, I've achieved my childhood, my teenage dream of being a YouTuber, of making online income. And I expect within one year, another one year, that I'll be able to achieve my recent big dream, which is to be a digital nomad, to take all of this and go abroad and just live in different countries and get to experience like whatever the world has to offer just with my camera and my laptop. And the reason why I'm able to achieve this is because my productivity just went up. I'm finally doing the work for YouTube because I've wanted to be a YouTuber for a long time. I just never got round to it because of laziness, because of just putting it off, because it was too hard. It was too much of delaying gratification. My mental health has never been this good before. So I've mentioned that I do have anxiety and, and I still do, but obviously with one year ago with the experience I was telling you when I was smoking from the crack pipe and everything, my mental health was an all time bad. High levels of stress, interrupted sleep from anxiety and stress. I'd literally just wake up literally sweating and worrying and thinking that someone was gonna attack me like a hundred times a day. Like that's not even an exaggeration. Every single time I'd step out of my apartment, 
I used to think that someone would try and stab me like more than once like every few seconds I would think that even being sat inside playing like playing video games overindulging in, in the bad habits was the only times so that my anxiety would essentially just disappear because I was just too much in a in a haze and in a rut to feel it but I felt like I was very depressed I felt like I had not much to live for at that point and now it's the complete opposite like I feel like I have everything to live for there's a psychologist Maslow who who made this pyramid the the hierarchy of needs I'm at the top I've reached self-actualization like I don't know maybe that sounds like a big ego boost or something but I think it is true I've checked off every single one of these little characteristics that he said you need to you check off to, to reach self-actualization like I'm at the point of of human experience that's why like I have motivation just on tap it's like 24 7 it doesn't turn off or anything my discipline sky high I'm doing all this stuff I feel so fulfilled with the, the stuff I'm doing because not only have I improved myself to the point that I feel awesome but my cup is full and now I'm just using my cup to to fill up the cups of the boys who I can help I've never felt purposeful or fulfilled in my entire life and now people are seeing me as like the leader like guys are sending me messages that I've literally saved their lives in terms of bad habits there there really isn't that many like I still do some bad stuff in terms of, you remember we're doing this the long term, so I'm not just going to completely cut stuff out and say, no, 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 it's against the rules. For example, I went to a party um, four or five days ago, took some MDMA there and you know, drank there and stuff. But that was like the first time I've done something social for like a year or something, you know, social party vibe for like an entire year. In the last year, I've smoked weed a bunch of times because I was with a girl. Like, you know, if you meet a girl from Tinder and, and she smokes, then obviously I'm going to smoke with her. And so I've smoked probably like 20 times over the last year, which is a fair amount. Maybe even a little bit more than that. It's a fair amount, but it's not something I feel negative about because it's it, it's not in a disgusting way where I'm smoking by myself whilst doing shit by myself. It was more like 11 p.m. meeting a girl to bang, obviously, and you smoke like, what, like half the joints or a quarter of the joint each and then like you know that's it that 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 to me is like a very good way to enjoy drugs and you know no one's supposed to i'm not supposed to ever tell you like oh make sure you do drugs but honestly if you do them like that like you have my blessing <laughs> in terms of video games movies netflix zero zero seconds i can promise you there's zero seconds on video games movies netflix a fair amount on youtube obviously because that's what i've allowed myself but recently i've just drooled over myself recently i've got even more pretty like not exactly strict but i've just lost even more interest in youtube and so i maybe watch about let's say less than two hours per week and honestly probably closer to about one hour which is the lowest i've ever had in my in my life since i started watching youtube social media for the entire year has been like very very low and i use it in like a tactical way where i I see it as like an online portfolio where you can gain something from it. You can get girls, you can get like business partners. I, I use it to invite people to join my podcast. So I go onto it to upload a picture. I have my notifications disabled and then I go off. I don't use it. Like I don't scroll or anything. I don't look at people's posts. I upload my picture and I go Snapchat. I don't even have it anymore. I literally delete my fully deleted my Snapchat account. Facebook, obviously no one uses that. No fap, nutted twice by myself in the last 12 months both times was like a conscious decision i won't get into like too much of the gory details but both times it was like i wanted to not in the sense of lust but in the sense of like practicality and like learning and, and stuff but maybe one day i'll explain why i did that shit. in terms of the good habits exercise like here's a screenshot i've hit 300 and something workouts in the last year like 300 and something workouts in the last year i've meditated let's say i've Almost every single day, let's say I miss like 50 days of, of meditation in an entire year, which is sick. Some days I went up to one hour per day, gratitude journaling almost every single day. Cold showers recently, I've been doing them twice per day. Bro, my entire life has gotten better. It's only going up. Like this has now created the foundation of me being a high performance, high productivity person which I've never been before. This is the story that every guy says, like, oh, you know, I've, I've always been a bad student and I've never been productive and girls wouldn't hold eye contact with me. Well, yeah, that's, that's exactly what it was. And honestly, I am a student now. What I realized is that my education began a year ago. Like I have, I've never truly learned anything my entire life, apart from about a year ago when I started this dopamine detox. And I actually have the attention span to learn now. 
like through school, it was such so unfortunate that through school, I always had a, a huge level of mindlessness. Like I, I couldn't concentrate. I, my mind was just talking over the teacher. Why would I care what the teacher's saying, bro? The teachers don't even like me. They keep shouting at me. I'm not gonna listen to them. I've got fucking anxiety, bro. Like I read. Like I, I'm actually a reader. I'm actually a learner. I take courses and everything. And every single time I read, man, it, I, I feel like part of a secret club because I've never been like this. I always thought, genuinely thought like reading was for just weird nerds and everything. I feel like I'm part of a secret club and I read and I think like, I can't believe people don't actually want this knowledge. I can't believe people don't, don't just read because every time I read, I get better. I read something about marketing and my business just gets better. I read something about mental health or positive thinking and now I just feel better here. It makes me feel crazy that people don't read. But to be honest, it makes me feel crazy that people don't do exactly what I do. It makes me feel like I, I get a, we a weird feeling when I realize like, oh yeah, people don't meditate. Like how, like how is that even that, that it can't even be possible that you don't meditate. That's, that's just weird. That's so strange to me that people don't meditate because if you meditate, you'll know what I'm saying. But if you don't meditate, you're a spurg and you won't even understand what I'm saying because you'll be like, oh, I, I tried to meditate, but it doesn't even show up, bro. Just keep meditating, bitch. But the first time it, it works, it's not supposed to work straight away, by the way, but the first time it works, you're going to be like me. You're going to be making these videos telling people like, you have to meditate, please. Like, try to meditate. This is how you meditate. It's just that people try it twice and they're like, oh, gee whiz, I, I couldn't clear my mind of thoughts. I couldn't negate the damage of 30 years of, of technology use and bad stuff. Gee, I guess it doesn't work. That's like a fat guy eating a salad and being like, oh, I didn't lose 50 pounds. Oh, I guess healthy eating doesn't work. If you're interested in doing a dopamine detox, maybe you've attempted one before, but you want to do it with my advice or like the way that I would do it. I made like a little three page checklist that you can just go through. So I've got like 20 points that you can just make sure that you're doing it, you're doing it all right. It's linked in the description, you get it for free. It's not like a selling thing or anything, you just get it for free and you can just make sure that you, you're doing your dopamine detox, right? If you're somewhat wealthy and you want my one-to-one -one help with this, it's like a premium service. You literally are gonna get me speaking to you like five times per week. Like I'm gonna call you like almost every single day, making sure that you're doing it right. And we're gonna go through all the issues that you're getting. I will also leave below my dopamine detox coaching. So it's not exactly for most people because it is like high ticket, but if you are struggling with those bad habits that I've mentioned before and you want to just shortcut how, how fast you can just start taking progress and how fast you can be productive again, <laughs> then I'll link that below and you'll get my one-to-one -one help. I'll be calling you every single day and we'll be messaging every day and you can read the page and you can just see for yourself. All of that's linked below. If you watch this entire video, then I'm grateful for that. You can leave a comment and let me know and I'll reply to you and we'll have a little conversation and no one will know that we're actually best friends now. Scroll down right now, click on the subscribe and the post notification button. If you've watched every second, then you clearly like the way that I talk and you're probably gonna like the rest of the videos I make. It's all about just not being a normal person, not being a Jeffrey anymore and trying to make progress to be the Adonis. Do the hard work, even when you don't feel like it.